before we proceed on our discussion, let me present to you our objectives. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to determine and apply the formula in finding the quartile value for group data. Solve problems involving quartiles for group data using frequency distribution table. Apply and interpret quartiles in real-life situations. Let's get started. In our previous lesson, we learned how to solve and interpret measures of position such as quartiles, deciles, and percentiles for ungrouped data. Now, we're going to discuss how to solve and interpret quartiles for group data. But first, what is a group data? Group data are data formed by aggregating individual observations of a variable into groups so that a frequency distribution of these groups serve as a convenient means of summarizing or analyzing the data. In calculating the measures of position for group data, understanding the frequency distribution table will be a great help. Frequency tells you how often something happened. The given frequency table shows the number of students who got the following scores in mathematics activity. By observation, we can conclude that there are 5 students who got a score from 1 to 10, 10 students from 11 to 20, 6 students who got 21 to 30, 4 students from 31 to 40, and 5 students who got a score from 41 to 50. To identify the number of students, you will add all the frequency and that will represent our n. We have 5 plus 4 is equal to 9, plus 6 is 15, plus 10 is 25, plus 5 is equal to 30. So n is equal to 30. Next, we will identify the size of the class interval. By counting, the size of the class interval is equal to 10 because we have 10 scores in each class. Small letter i represent the size of the class interval, so i is equal to 10. More so, we can add two columns in our table to list the lower boundaries and the less than cumulative frequency of each class. To identify the lower boundary, you will subtract 0.5 from the lower limit of each class. The lower limits are 1, 11, 21, 31, and 41. So the lower boundaries are 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5, 11 minus 0 0.5 is 10.5, 21 minus 0 0.5 is 20.5, 31 minus 0 0.5 is 30.5, 41 minus 0 0.5 is 40.5. In addition, to get the less than cumulative frequency, we will start with the first class, the one with the lowest value of lower limit and upper limit in the class interval. We will look at the frequency of the class and copy it in the column of the cumulative frequency. So we have 5. Then we will add this to the frequency of the second class. 5 plus 10 is equal to 15. Then we will add 15 by the frequency of the third class. 15 plus 6 is equal to 21. Then 21 plus 4 is equal to 25. Then 25 plus 5 is equal to 30. At this moment, let us determine the formula that we're going to use to solve the quartile value for group data. In finding the value of quartile, we need to determine first the Q sub K class. The formula is simply Q sub k class is equal to k times n over 4. Then, we can proceed to the formula for quartile, which is Q sub k is equal to the lower boundary plus quantity k times n over 4 minus less than cumulative frequency before the quartile class all over the frequency of the quartile class times the interval. Again, 
LB is the lower boundary of the Q sub K class. N is the total number of frequency. Less than CFB is equal to the less than cumulative frequency before the Q sub K class. FQK is equal to the frequency of the QK class. I is the size class interval. And K represent the nth quartile. For you to understand this, let's have an illustrative example. Calculate the Q sub 1, Q sub 2, and Q sub 3 of the mathematics test score of 50 students using the given frequency table. We will solve quartile 1 or the lower quartile, followed by quartile 2 or the median, and lastly, quartile 3 or the upper quartile. Let's start solving quartile 1. Solving the lower quartile. First step is to create additional column for the lower boundaries and the less than cumulative frequency. Step number two, fill in the table by identifying the lower boundaries and less than cumulative frequency. To identify the lower boundaries, we will subtract 0.5 from the lower limit in each class. So we have 21 minus 0.5 is 20.5, 26 minus 0.5 is 25.5, 31 minus 0 0.5 is 30.5, 36 minus 0 0.5 is 35.5, 41 minus 0 0.5 is 40.5, and 46 minus 0 0.5 is 45.5. Moreover, to get the less than commutative frequency, we will start with the first class, the one with the lowest value of lower limit and upper limit in the class interval. We will look at the frequency of the first class and copy it in the column of the less than commutative frequency. So we have 6. Then we will add this to the frequency of the second class, which is 12. So we have 6 plus 12 is equal to 18. Then we will add 18 by the frequency of the third class. So 18 plus 9 is equal to 27. Then 27 plus 11 is 38. Then 38 plus 8 is 46. Last, we have 46 plus 4 is equal to 50. The last number of the less than commutative frequency also determines the total number of frequency. So n is equal to 50. To check, you can add all the frequencies. 4 plus 8 plus 11 plus 9 plus 12 plus 6 must be equal to 50. By counting, the size of the class interval is equal to 5. Step number 3. Determine the Q sub k class before computing the value for Q sub k. We have Q sub k class is equal to k times n over 4. By substitution, we have Q sub 1 class is equal to 1 times 50 all over 4. 1 times 50 is equal to 50 divided by 4 is equal to 12.5. 12.5 is between 18 and 6 in the cumulative frequency. So, we will choose the higher value which is 18. Thus, Q sub 1 class is found in the second class. After we determine the Q sub 1 class, we can now apply the formula for quartile to solve the quartile value. We have Q sub K is equal to the lower boundary plus quantity K times N over 4 minus less than commutative frequency before the quartile class all over the frequency of the quartile class times the interval. We can now substitute the given values. We have Q sub 1 is equal to the lower boundary which is equal to 25.5. We already solved Kn over 4 that is equal to 12.5 minus less than commutative frequency before the quartile class. Less than commutative frequency is 18 before the quartile class, we have 6. All over the frequency of the quartile class is equal to 12. Times the interval, which is equal to 5. After substitution, we can now solve. 
12.5 minus 6 is equal to 6.5 and the rest copy. Next, we will multiply 6.5 by 5. That is equal to 32.5. Divided by 12, we have 2.71. Q sub 1 is equal to 25.5 plus 2.71 is equal to 28.21. Therefore, quarter 1 is equal to 28.21. Quarter 1 means 25% of the distribution. Therefore, 25% of the students have a score less than or equal to 28.21. After solving for quarter 1 or the lower quartile, let us proceed solving for quartile 2 or the median. Since we already identified the lower boundaries and less than cumulative frequency, we can already proceed with step number 3, and that is to determine the Q sub K class. We have Q sub K class is equal to K times N over 4. By substitution, we have Q sub 2 is equal to 2 times 50 over 4. 2 times 50 is 100 divided by 4 is equal to 25. 25 is in between 27 and 18. Again, we will choose the higher value which is 27. Hence, the Q sub 2 class is found in the third class. After we determine the Q sub K class, we can now apply the formula for quartile to solve the quartile value. We have Q sub K is equal to the lower boundary plus quantity K times N over 4 minus less than cumulative frequency before the Q sub 2 all over the frequency of the Q sub K class times the interval. We can now substitute the given values. We have Q sub 2 is equal to the lower boundary which is equal to 30.5. We already solved KN over 4. That is equal to 25 minus less than cumulative frequency before the Q sub 2 class. So less than cumulative frequency is 27 before it is 18. All over the frequency of the Q sub 2 which is equal to 9. Times the interval which is obviously equal to 5. After substitution, we can now solve 25 minus 18 is equal to 7, then the rest copy. Next, we will multiply 7 by 5 is equal to 35 divided by 9 is equal to 3.89. 30.5 plus 3.89 is equal to 34.39. So Q sub 2 is equal to 34.39. Q sub 2 means 50% of the distribution. Therefore, 50% of the students have a score less than or equal to 34.39. After solving quartile 1 and quartile 2, let us proceed solving quartile 3 or the upper quartile. Since we already identified the lower boundaries and less than cumulative frequency, we can already proceed with step number 3 and that is to determine the Q sub K class. We have Q sub K class is equal to K times N over 4. By substitution, we have Q sub 3 class is equal to 3 times 50 over 4. Since our N is 50 and K is 3, since we are solving for Q sub 3. Let us compute. 3 times 50 is equal to 150 divided by 4 is equal to 37.5. 37.5 is between 38 and 27. Again, we will choose the higher value, which is 38. Hence, the Q sub 3 class is found in the fourth class. After we determine our Q sub K class, we can now apply the formula for quartile to solve the quartile value. We have Q sub K is equal to the lower boundary plus quantity K times N over 4 
minus less than cumulative frequency before the q sub k all over the frequency of q sub k times the interval. Let us substitute the given values. We have q sub 3 is equal to the lower boundary which is equal to 35.5. Then we already solve kn over 4 that is equal to 37.5 minus the cumulative frequency before the q sub 3. So the cumulative frequency is 38 for the q sub 3 before it is 27 all over the frequency of the q sub k which is equal to 11 times the interval which is 5. After substitution, we can now solve 37.5 minus 27 is equal to 10.5 and the rest copy. Next, we will multiply 10.5 by 5 that is equal to 52.5 divided by 11 is equal to 4.77 35.5 plus 4.77 is equal to 40.27 q sub 3 is equal to 40.27 q sub 3 means 75 percent of the distribution therefore 75 percent of the students have a score less than or equal to 40.27 Again, the lower quartile or Q sub 1 is equal to 28.21, the middle quartile is equal to 34.39, and the upper quartile or Q sub 3 is equal to 40.27.